Hello and welcome back to Life of Fuse. This is Drew Taylor, once again joined by Charles Hood. And uh, what I can only describe as our third co-host, Lauren Balf, who is back to talk to us more about the score for Mission Impossible Fallout. Well, I think we have to wrap up. I want oh, to yeah, ask just sort we of... got time. We got time. We, we uh, a... Yeah, no, I was literally oh, okay. saying. Well, really... but 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 I think it would be good for you to sort of like like looking back on this experience and also looking at the response to this movie. It's now the number one movie in the franchise. So mm. conceivably, right now, more people have seen this, you know, than yeah. any of the others. How does that make you feel? Um, was there anything that you wanted to be in the movie that didn't end up? Yeah, in me it? singing in that club okay, scene. <laughs> but uh, um, I mean, no, you know, the thing is, is that I, I think that um, no, anything that was removed was removed for a reason. Yeah, you know, it's 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 like whenever I've watched deleted scenes, I think if I'm a fan, like if somebody went, I think I saw like deleted scenes from the Goonies once oh yeah with the octopus, octopus. yeah 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 <laughs> and, I, and, I, and i was so excited i'd heard about it like, yeah right. like googling for it no. and i i wish i could got in a time machine and not seen it yeah <laughs> it it's it's it didn't benefit me in any way yeah um and and i it, yes it, it made we talk about that all the time about how you know there's documentaries about movies that were almost made or whatever and it's like well, the documentary is fine because if they made it, maybe it wouldn't have been like yeah. this amazing yeah. kind of hypothetical. Yeah, thing. I, I know. There's no point thinking about it. No, you know, and <laughs> I, I think that it's um, and it's interesting because I think with the trailer, so a lot of the trailers, so the first trailer that came out, I think it had the Imagine Dragons song on it. There's some stuff in that trailer. Well, yes, which is you know, it's not, it doesn't, it's not on the movie. Yeah. Um, the helicopter down. The helicopter yeah. down. Him swinging into the palais. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and and the thing is, is that they just didn't, they don't make sense. Yeah. And I think that um, those trailers. So I did, uh, I did quite a few of the trailers. Okay. Um, for the end sections to get it in time with this Imagine Dragons piece which which sounded like it was from a mission impossible <laughs> yeah. movie yeah it was but only because i i actually yeah i i took there was a little dung 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 and i chopped it up and take it dung 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 oh okay it wasn't in the original <laughs> but i thought i you know it was that kind of rub the belly in your head at the same time right well, that's clever isn't it <laughs> and i think it got everybody annoyed saying they've they've ripped off the mission impossible thing um but no, I, I, uh, no regrets. You know, I, I think that it's, you know, there's out of maybe three hours of music, four hours of music that I wrote, um, everything that's not in there is justified. Yeah. I think. But how, how has it been, you know, having your music heard by countless millions of people? Have they come up to you? Have they told you Hit how much me. they loved you? Yeah, Hit and me. then told you, told you on Twitter or whatever. I mean... I, I think there was a massive... Uh, there was a massive backlash when it came out that I was doing it. And I, I think that really, uh, yeah. And, and, and what? Well, as, well, I think I think some people kind of felt that it wasn't as as loyal musically to the prior movies, very orchestral and very um, of that uh, genre. Um, and uh, uh, you know, things have got to move on in life sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can't and I think that's what Fallout did Fallout could have done another in the exact same style um, yeah. as the prior ones and 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 what would that achieve you yeah know? it had to move on and 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 evolve so but I think I think uh, it was it was a uh, I like I, you know I thought doing this change was good yeah. Everyone, everyone um, we've talked to, and, and all we do is talk to people about Mission Impossible. Yeah. Do you talk, everyone do you, loves the score. I mean, yeah. the, the do you talk about anything else? We don't talk about anything else. I don't know what his wife's name is. I, I mean, I, it's... Mission. Yeah, Mission, yeah. I mean, we both work... We do this Elsa. As, uh, Elsa. <laughs> yeah, we... But, you know, we had... I was doing an interview with a radio station, and they asked me, and they said, um, in Argentina, and they said, uh, now, has uh, Maestro... Lalo, has he, uh, has he said anything about your music? I said, well, quite honestly, throughout the whole film process, I was thinking of sending it to him. I forget, I got too scared, and I thought also if he heard it and he didn't like it, right. he could cause problems. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh, so I'll leave it, 
and then it was getting close to the end Oh no! I still couldn't. Do it. So I waited till the movie came out because then you know you're safe. Yeah, right. Because you school, can't do anything. About you it. can't. You know, so, <laughs> you know, schools get replaced. Yeah, as it happened on one. Yeah. Do you ever hear the original one? Sylvester. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's online. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is interesting because it's like it is. T- t- it's, to me, it's interesting that we talked about this a little bit. It feels like it actually would fit in some of the later sequels. Yes. The tone of it would fit in maybe yeah. three or four. Or, I know. know, but it wouldn't work in one. No, and that was why it made sense to bring Elfman in. Yes. But it probably the whole guitar factor would have fitted in two. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, two. But they said so. They said. Um, so I said no. So anyway, movie comes out. I thought okay, I'll send. I'll email it to him. Um, and I got his email, and I emailed it to him. I got nothing. No response or anything. So I thought, well, did I send a? So I went and kind of did a uh, resend on my email <laughs> just so I didn't want to say hey by the way did you get my email I didn't want to f- send again so it yeah. just looks um, oh, I still got nothing so in this interview they asked and I said oh, um, I haven't actually heard from him and I said the whole backstory so then uh, about 45 minutes later my phone goes and it's the radio station and they said um and there's, you know, there's translating going on. And he said, uh, Mr. Balfi, Mr. Balfi, um, we just uh, spoke to Maestro Lalo. Uh, here's the interview. <laughs> <laughs> and and so they played him like three or four tracks of the album. And and he was and he was talking about it. And it was just so funny because I was just beam. You know, I, I think the l- last time I beamed this much was when my wife gave birth it was right. dry, you know it was like you he, he, what he said was he said it was it's so lovely for people to still enjoy this music and uh you know everything he said was just so non-selfish you know it was, yeah. it was fantastic about the fact that it, it keeps you know it's it's still it's still it's still um it's still alive yeah um but um, but yeah, and then he he said bravo, bravo, you know. And, oh, and I, that's I, so I, awesome. I thought, well, that, that's a really also he was cornered to say it. Right. But my first question was, <laughs> I said, how do you have his number? <laughs> yeah. And the radio guy said, we have everybody's number. <laughs> we think we know where he lives, so we, we could knock on his door, but we have not we have not taken those. We haven't knocked on his yet. door yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> but it, but you know what what a what a journey. You know, you wonder when he did create that, whether he knew the the, would, the, the how importance long it would live on. of yeah, and yeah. we we've even like listed all the times it's been used in commercials and parodies well, just, and uh, you know we just had it for Apple. That's right, the big Apple. Yeah, did you were you a part of that? Uh huh. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Did you record anything new? No. Did you see that? No, from the Apple key, the Apple keynote. Yeah, the keynote was was the... Lauren's uh, Mission Impossible. That's awesome. Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, so it was it was the whole um, yeah the whole opening of it, and and it was you know it was, it was fantastic, yeah. wasn't it? It was a, but it was um, but no, it, it's like I think it, it, it's part of our uh, it's part of our um, persona now. Yeah, that theme. You know, when somebody's running late or you come, you've got to oh, yeah. do something. Just, yeah. People go dumb, 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 dumb. Yeah. You know that and Jules. Right. Yeah. Even Star Wars, I think my if I was to do Star Wars to my mum, she'd probably, uh, you know, I don't think she'd nail it. But Mission Impossible, you you do. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very much a part of the sort of cultural DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it's universal. Yes. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's yeah, it, it, it's so big. Were you thinking about this while you were? doing it i mean if i had to do a project like that i would just sort of like crumble within you know, like, <laughs> well, no, that's that's that i do daily anyway oh. <laughs> I, I don't need to be on a project to, to feel self-loathing um they uh yes you know right at the beginning you're intimidated by it and then you just going back to the original thing i said about you just treat it like it was written yesterday and then you go ahead because i think it's it's like if you start kind of being in awe of it, you're scared to touch it. Yeah. Right. Um, and you've just got to kind of go, okay, this is reality. And, but, but no, it's, it's like, yeah, you, 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 it means so much to people. And I think that's, that's the whole, to me, that's the whole thing. It's the same way that I, you know, with, with a lot of video games, especially, um, if they don't have the themes in connected to the originals, I always say, "Oh, I don't." It's it ruins it. Yeah. Right. Um, and and Ethan Hunt, you know, Tom's character, 
um, is that piece of music. Did he say anything to you about the score? Um, he said, yes. He said, he said great, great. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. um, you know the weird, the funny thing about that is that it is, it is kind of you, 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 you pinch yourself because you're talking about something, and then you go in your head. Wait a minute, <laughs> that's Tom Cruise. Yeah. You know, and and it's and you know, first he's you know he's a producer on it, so he's involved with it. It's not like just a star. You sometimes get movie actors that kind of make comments or something, but but you know he this is his baby. Oh yeah, yeah. he. I don't think anybody understands Mission Impossible. No. I mean, besides the two of us, of as course. well as, as <laughs> well as Tom Cruise. Well, okay. Are you above him or or uh, <laughs> whatever you think? It's about even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but he. Um, but no. But you know, it, it is. It is. Yes, this is this is him. Mm-hmm. And I think that. You know, a, a couple of sequences that we talked about um, was the helicopter sequence, especially the diving thing. You know that was a musical discussion we had a few times when he when he falls or the scene for that that was exercised uh, from the... uh, uh, no, no, no where sorry the music scene when it goes uh, uh, through the the clouds oh, the clouds yes you know, yeah there at a couple of moments in the paris uh, section again this whole feeling of using the theme right and where do we warrant to do it and to give the audience fun you know it, it it's He's he's very very good at that, being aware of what the audience is wanting. You know, some people some people some people uh, you are kind of selfish with I want it like this. Right. And you don't get that. Yeah, he seems to have an almost like supernatural sense of, you know, what is expected of this franchise and what he can deliver obviously because but, he does all these crazy things. Well, I know. And that's the thing, and listen, you know, half the majority of the movies I work on well, you're sitting in my studio now. My big television. There's, there's basically eighty percent of the things on screen are missing. Right. You know, you've got a <laughs> robot, but you've got somebody standing there with a stick waving it around. <laughs> um, so, and with this, you know, that whole um, the bike ride chase. You know, when working on it, you, that's what that's what it is. Yeah. You know, it, it's rare. Uh, movies like this don't come around. Yeah, it's all practical. Like yeah, they, they really did all of these things. Yes, so so <laughs> so you're invested in it more because it's just what you. It's 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 real, mm-hmm. which is just which is, which is, I think rare, especially for composers, because you're kind of, you know, you've got to add more to it because there's nothing there. Right, <laughs> but no, it and 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 it is movies like Fallout are rare to work on and 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 you know, rarely come around. Yeah, so it's been I've been very fortunate to. Have, to be invited into that family, you know that is that is rare. Do you think you could rank your favorite movies? I mean, rank the Mission Impossible movies from your favorite to your least favorite. We've asked our <laughs> our, our only other guest. We've asked this, and you know, feel free to, to step aside if you don't. If you don't. No, okay. I, well, all right. I gotta go. Uh, uh, well, Fallout. It's number one. Uh, oh no! You see, you're gonna get. I'm gonna get. Diff- it's gonna get yeah, tricky gonna, with uh, numbers. So I'm gonna go. Okay. My most favorite. Yeah, downwards. my favorite. Down to, okay, go ahead. But I'm gonna stop after three. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, because um, obviously Fallout. Okay. Number one. Obviously. Right. Um, I'm gonna go with number one for my number two. Okay. Okay. And then uh, MI two for my number three. Really? Wow. Okay. Can, yeah. can you talk to us about that? <laughs> Like, the way That's you a, say it no, is like, no, it's, well, it's, 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 it's fascinating because everyone it's divisive. has. Yeah. It's a divisive movie. There are and, people who have come out recently in defense of it, yeah. talking about how it was sort of unfairly maligned over the years. I, so, just, I think it was, a, it, it, was a, it was a period of time for that, film make, that filmmaking. Yeah. And I think that the cliff scene. The knife in the eye? Yeah. That you know, me. it's like, <laughs> um, it, it, it just represented... This it's like all movies. You you also associate where you are in life. Yes. Right. Uh, and and it's um, everything about it. The music in it. Um, uh, the two motorbikes going towards each other and flying yeah. in the air. It's crazy, but it was escapism. Yeah. And I just remember watching it, just going, "This is, this is Hollywood movies." You know, it, it's everything that that. Um, you know the last few films 
I've done well, last year was uh, with Jerry Bruckheimer still pinching myself because the beginning of the, the movies when you hear the thunder clap and, the and you see you know yeah. and and it's like this is a Bruckheimer movie and it's a like Con Air all these films are part of our education and two was of that genre where, right. where you know oh it's the most two made in the year 2000 movie yeah, I think you know, ever not enough doves could be released. Right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, and uh, it's it's yeah, because some people, well, some people are harsh about that one. And they yeah, but it's but their, it's also fascinating because the bottom list, right? But everybody we talked to, too, yeah, but everybody has a different list too. Like we, right. everyone that we talk to, and it's true, you know, you could you the movies are so good and they're so compelling in their own right that. But I I did an interview um, for a film music for, um, site, and they they had Fallout like number four. What? Really? And, 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 and I, I I was like, okay. <laughs> wow. I, you know, but, but there you go. Isn't the, you know that was makes it exciting, isn't <sighs> yeah. it? That we I mean, all kind I, of have these. Some people have just got ridiculously stupid taste. <laughs> <laughs> But it's well, don't, don't also... listen to our rankings episode then. Uh, so, yeah. what, so what is your rankings? Well, uh, we actually ended up with the same rankings, yeah. although we said that our opinion on mm. it can change a lot because we've been building to it for a few months talking about the. Yeah, movies. but I think I've read this, haven't I? No, uh, we no we just you don't we put it up. It. La- no, we put it up last week, so I, I'll, I'll email it to it. you. Yeah, but basically, it was it, the first one was number one. Yeah. Palm was number yeah. one, and then Fallout. Yeah. And then Ghost Protocol. Okay, yes. We love Ghost Protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're big fans of Ghost Protocol. We yeah. saw it in IMAX together. Well, I think Ghost Protocol also was, I think it was a pinnacle po- point where it just clicked. Yes. Yeah. So, that seemed to be like uh-huh. a kind of shift in the yes. direction of the series. Yes. It seems like Tom Cruise and everybody kind of figured out, oh, this is what mission is. Yeah. Like, they really put Inter- it together. Yes, I think that's a great way to look at it. I- I'm not being as intellectual as you. I'm being... Uh, <laughs> no. I- I'm being... Uh, selfish by saying the one I worked on is my number one, yeah, <laughs> and then the, and then, no. the, and then the other two are based on on memories. Yeah, uh, and, and and you know the fish, you know the the, the restaurant tank, and yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, things like that. It's just like, yeah, it was just. It's, but what's interesting is that you know Macquarie said this a lot that that Rogue Nation was sort of coasting on the goodwill of, of yeah. Ghost Protocol, and that for Fallout they really had to do something yeah. different. Which is why I think your score works so well yeah. is because it's so radically different from yeah. everything else. Yeah, he said that he, he said that he felt like Fallout was more his movie. Yeah, that he was paying he was like paying his respects too much yeah. maybe on Rogue Nation. Not that to take anything away from Rogue Nation, we think that's also one of the best <laughs> ones. I mean, it's a franchise that just has great movies yeah. pretty much all the way through. Yes, I think you know. The, the, also, the other danger is sometimes it's like, okay, we're a franchise. This just turn it around and yeah. make it. And I think that this, I think it was, it's loyal, and and it's yeah. just, you know, where you go now, I don't know, I have no idea. Yeah, I, we, we've, we've <laughs> talked about this. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I imagine they're probably trying to convince him to do the movie, or maybe he's agreed and they haven't publicly said it yet. But I, I don't know how you come back and and match that. Yeah. I, I, and and, and no. Fall, Fallout is so good in that. Also, you have to it, do it in space. <laughs> well, that or you'd have to. Yeah. I think you should scale it back and make it more. We talk about this a lot. Make it kind of like one, where it's a little bit more contained. It's not crazy. It probably pieces. won't. It probably won't do as well, but we would love it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, I just you don't don't try to top it basically in the no, same and, way because you just won't be able to. And Fallout felt like a culmination too of everything. I mean, there's yeah. there's so many homages to every other entry, and yeah. I, I think that's the, the amazing thing about Fallout is that it actually makes all the previous entries better. Yeah, it, like it, it, it added weight to the whole Julie story, and like I mean, it just yeah. Julia's story. It's like it's like if yeah, somebody was telling me it's a bit like marriage, you know, they ended up on their fourth husband, but they had to get through the first three, <laughs> 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 and, then, and, then, and then they sorted it. Right, um, but no, it, it is, it is no, it is, but it's a, it's like everything. It's like I thought about it. I think I, I think I did everything I could I could do with that theme now. I wouldn't know what to do right now. So, you know, I, I think I'm, I I was part of that journey. I wouldn't know what to do. Right. I don't know how you take Ethan... You know, what on earth is he going to do next? Yeah. To what, beat you... it. Because it was... I've watched it... I watched it in Paris at the premiere. watched it in London. Um, 
I've watched it another time in London. And, you know, I keep noticing more things. Yeah, we've, you know, we've both seen it a lot in the theatre. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've, I've probably worked on it. Yeah. And I just sit there and say, oh, whoa. You know, these tiny little things that you kind of miss and um, and the experience of it. Yes. It's it's just... And it goes back to that whole thing. Just very few films are getting made like this. Yeah. It is a real experience. Yeah. It, it's It's... It's... Yeah, you know, I watch a lot of movies on the plane coming back and forth. On this journey, you know, everything I watched was just, you know, spaceships and I sound like an old man spaceships and <laughs> I mean that's yeah. what it is. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. where we are. But, but this is just it, it's, it's 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 real. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, maybe our most important question is will you email Macquarie and tell him to come on the show? Has he not done your show? <laughs> no. no, he hasn't. We don't have his email address either, so we have not. Well, his him email personally. is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Chris. You know, I, I, I can't, Have you listened to the Empire? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. We've, we've like we've, seven hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Forensically in a, in a darkened room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Chris. What is amazing about those interviews is that he's just honest. Yeah. Yeah. And and I. And there's no there's no ego, and it's like this didn't work, so we did this, right? And we tried that. You know, he, he's he's brutally honest about his himself and his ways of filmmaking, and and he wants to sh- and he's he wants to share it, you know. So it, it's it's um, uh, I know that he would he he loves talking to people with passion. Yeah. And one of you two has got a lot of passion. Uh, <laughs> no, neither of us do. I don't <laughs> yeah, we're we're we really want to talk. But he's like our white whale, you know. Yeah. Um, but he also seems to have a like Cruz has this like innate ability to understand what the audience yeah. wants mm-hmm. and is very egoless in terms of delivering that. Which is rare. Which is rare. You know, right. you get uh, the major the majority of the majority have got egos. Yeah. Yeah. And and they keep they'll keep at it yeah. until they fail. But 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 I think you know the the mission family um, are very egoless. Yeah. Uh, and Eddie Hamilton, uh, you know, just talk about an unsung like part of the <laughs> mission family. Eddie that, Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, I know. Well, I, yeah. I, I I yes. You know. I, I he he, he yeah. He, that DNA is in him. Yeah. And and also his loyalty to the franchise and knowing what's what's right and what's not. You well, know, and he we, was the only one I think that McCory carried over from Rogue Nation in terms of you know, he, department he, heads. You know, yeah. McCory said he wanted to bring in all new people yeah, yeah, to kind yeah. of make it feel like a new filmmaker, but he carried over Eddie Hamilton as yes. editor. Yes, I mean, how could you not? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know the thing, is, but also like we had a lot of debates about the plot theme because Eddie would uh, plays me. Eddie's like, no, that's different. I'm like what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's right. Like, yeah, and, and there's a, a lot of kind of like musical policing going because then you start finding oh, in th- three the melody changed, you know, just by an odd note. Right. Four then pl- it changed again or something because it, we all kind of you'd actually just start playing ba ba da ba da ba da 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 you know and then and then oh no uh, uh, you know some people have done it by ear yeah right you know so you kind of have to go back to the origins yeah. Um, and um, you know, really try to track it down. But he, you know, he's an encyclopedia about film music. Hans so. didn't use the plot. Uh, you don't think he did? Did, did he? he? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you just blew this podcast wide open. <laughs> I, I should have just left you thinking that. <laughs> the next two weeks listening to the plot. <laughs> oh, I think I heard a note <laughs> from it. <laughs> But there's a great, you know. But then in two, there's a great piece. I think it's called Injection. Injection. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Lisa Gerald. Yeah, it's just, it's just a stunning piece. Which, which, I don't know if you've seen his tour that he's that he was doing last last no, year. No, we heard about it. We neither of us got to go. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. Um, but but he's now. Is he doing that in yeah, the show? Yeah, he's now doing it. Oh, now which, we gotta go. Which wasn't in it originally, but it's now in it, and it, and it, in, um, and Lisa's singing it. Oh, oh wow. wow! That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so maybe number two will get higher up in your ranking. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't tell you where it was. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, uh, but um, but yeah, no, no, no. But then again, it's it's like, I think the two, it was just, it's like a lot of films. You know, you do it for your opening sequence, 
it's like Term- you know, back to Terminator, sorry. But you know, a lot of the films have done it and then they move on. And they don't bring yeah. it back. And they don't bring it back. And, yeah. and when we did and David Ellison who Skydance, who did Fall Out, also yes. did Terminator. Yeah. So I know David through that. And again that was you know, when do we do when do we do that dun 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 and and it was you know, obviously when Arnie is kicking butt yeah. yeah and that's what you know you use it wisely and so would you say your terminator is the best terminator film in the franchise oh <laughs> that's, that's cruel <laughs> i think you i think that it's hard to beat t2 oh, t2 yeah. I, I, it's not it's not hard to you can't yeah, yeah. you know everything about Did it. you they're doing a new terminator movie is, is he coming back is brad fidel coming back uh, I don't know because Cameron's producing it. Yeah, I'm wondering. But Brad hasn't done a, a, you a know, score in a, a while. school um, in a long time. Yeah, you know, I, th- I don't, I don't, th- I could be wrong, but I, but my impression from watching things, I, I don't think he enjoyed the studios. You know, the uh, the, the uh, system, okay. the way of doing it, because yeah. it's it is a different. It, it's not, uh, you know, some people kind of. Somebody said to me. Well, you know, you tr- you treat you treat writing music like a job. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Weirdly enough, <laughs> you know, I, you, we can be as artistic as we want, but but it is a job. Yeah. And I think that when you p- pour your heart out into writing a piece of music, and somebody says that sh- it doesn't work, it's shit. Right. It doesn't work. It's not right for you. The movie. It's not helping telling. So so you've got to do it. Write something else. Yeah. And I think it's very difficult for some some people to kind of create and know that it's got to evolve and move on. Yeah. Um, because it's personal, and you know that 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 is the, that is how it works. It's it's same ways if a scene doesn't work, all those actors and the whole crew have done it. It doesn't work. Scrap it. Yeah. Are there any composers that you would like to see take on the Mission Impossible? sound next no just me just you okay. <laughs> you just get exclusive rights you said it was so hard and it was eight <laughs> months and you're, you're like yeah. um you know um oh gosh I hadn't I hadn't thought of it you worked with who did you work with on Ghost Cliff Martinez on Ghost in the Shell or Cliff Clint Mansell Clint Mansell okay that was he'd be cool yeah cool of course you know Clint's an amazing composer uh, you know I, I don't think I, I you can't look at it and go who should I think it's Okay. What is the movie? What is the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mission always decides. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that you know, if 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 it, you know, it could go crazy and become an animation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Spider I mean, Man's, the... Spider Man's doing it. Yeah. Right. You know, so you so, say, yeah, that's a ridiculous thing to say. I apologize, but, but you know, it, <laughs> it, it, it it could go somewhere. To, and I think that when that direction's known, then you know, it could maybe it could go back to Gear Kira. Yeah. Yeah. You know that style of. Okay, that we've we've trained. I, who knows? Okay, you know, it, it's like, you know, I could list a, a many of my friends that are amazing composers yeah. and go, Rupert Gregson Williams should do it. Right, you know? but I I don't know because it just depends on the film. Well, hopefully you get the next one again. Yep, tapping wood. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, is wood. Get, that is wood. We gotta get, you know, Macquarie back. You know, he's gotta say he's gonna complete the trilogy. Yeah. But you see, that's the hard thing for him, though, because I think everybody's throwing the word trilogy. Yeah. I, and I don't think it was ever thought of as a No, no. <laughs> we also had his hand in Ghost Protocol. Yeah. And you could kind of see that as maybe the first yeah. entry in his trilogy, you know, yeah. and Fallout as the capper. Yeah. Listen, it just, it must just, it has to be so intimidating yeah. after you, what you've created. Because I don't think, I don't think anybody really knew it was just going to hit home so much. And I'm not saying on a, a monetary way because I think that kind of that, that's a different world but I think the fact that um, fans loved it yeah um, and it, it it just it connected yeah oh it did, uh, yeah I mean yeah. I think it really captured the zeitgeist in a way that I don't know when the last one did in such a way that everyone was talking about it everyone was saying go see it it made everybody go back and revisit the old ones yeah I mean, it, that, I, that I, hasn't happened before no, in this series and I, and I don't I've I was very fortunate the hands working on a lot of great movies and I've never had people say uh, this is the fourth fifth time I watched the movie yeah right I've never you know the closest was probably Inception right because people were trying to figure it out and they were going back again watching it with this it's yeah it's people constantly saying I'm on my fourth time 
Have you heard Nolan that, from Nolan? Did he say he loved it? No, I don't know. Right. No, I'm yeah. saying no, as in you I did because you, you did additional music also on Dunkirk as well. Yeah. So so you have kind of a relationship with Nolan, I would assume. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the only the only film I hadn't worked on was Interstellar. You know, since he worked with Hands, right? Um, so it was a long, yeah, yeah. So all the Batman's and. Um, but you know, you know, Dunkirk is just an am- beautiful, amazing film. Yeah, it's um, and I, 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 and you know, people talked about it afterwards. You know, this this is the other great thing about these movies is that people get to talk about it. It's not just rubbish that you discard, right? Um, and Fallout, people kept going to watch it again. Yeah, and 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 yeah, it's it, it's it's unique to me this whole experience because it's just it, it, Chris and Tom really did create something special that it's just well I think we're amazed that you were like you said you were nervous about taking yeah. this on even yeah. though you've worked on these huge movies that are that there's a lot of pressure on those movies but yeah but what it, was it about this I mean what makes this more daunting than Dark Knight Rises or because I think it's a it's weirdly You've got nothing to compare it to. I think there's, I think there's Dark Knight. I think there's Batman's. They weren't a number, right? You know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. And 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 it's just like it gets better and better. And it's like okay, you've got to beat, you've got to beat the last one. And I know, <laughs> and I, you know, and it's like you can't look at it as a competition. I know, but it doesn't matter. It, it, you really got to kind of go. Oh gosh, this is. And I think also it's just. Um, a different place in life you know I worked on those movies but I worked under hands mm-hmm. so I had a, a wonderful ability to, to be able to sit in the back right and let him take the blame or the <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, well yeah well well, you know what yeah because it was you know something that he always said and it never uh, I never kind of understood it he said it's diff- the stress level's different when you're sitting in the seat right it's a different it's a different thing because when it goes well it's great when it's going wrong, you're the one getting it, you know, and it, and 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 that's the thing, you know, you're 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 beating yourself up a lot, you know, that mission thing could not write it, you know, it was just worrying me constantly. It's like I'm not understanding it. It whatever I'm doing is clashing with dialogue, and um, the and the halo jump. You know, there's just two scenes that were just, you know, you just start then thinking, God, I'm probably going to get fired. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you're losing, so you just can't, and you're racking your brain, going, what am I missing? But that's what makes it fun. Yeah. You know, if it's easy. Um, it might not be very then memorable. There's no challenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that, and, and that's what I'm always trying to do, is, you know, you're just trying to kind of find different challenges. And if you, you keep, it's like if you just do horror movies as a director even where do you move on yeah right go and do a romantic comedy and then go back and do it yeah you know you've got to kind of keep changing and that's what I think probably the difficult thing is yeah Chris is you know if he does if if there is another one if he does it you know what do you do it's such pressure yeah he's working on Top Gun now so he'll he'll have that and then he'll just down the road yeah and then he'll (laughs) then he'll come back and yeah 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 well, I think for both of us, we just want to thank you for taking the time. Yeah, to it's talk an absolute to us. pleasure. We love the score, oh, and good. it's been such a thrill to talk to you and to talk about all things Mission Impossible. Yeah, yeah. So, no, no, it's, it's been lovely talking to you, and also, it's just nice to now be part of this whole world. Yeah, you know, it's 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 um, and possibly some. I won't say what, but there's probably some exciting something exciting is going to happen to do with the music. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we had we had Mo from Mondo here talking <laughs> yeah. about how much he wanted to put out your score on vinyl. On vinyl. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. I don't know if that's what it is. No, just not that. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, thank you so much. Can't wait for that. You and just... uh, thank you for choosing to accept this mission. Uh, mission accomplished. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks again for listening, everyone. And before we go, another mission, should you choose to accept it, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And remember that you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LightTheFusePod and email us questions or comments at LightTheFusePodcasts at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch the original Mission Impossible television show, all seven seasons are currently available to stream on Amazon Prime. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs>